Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. It's Miss Julie here, and I have my pen. Miss Francis just threw to me on Friday, and I am ready to show you something that I have made for you. So we're gonna work on patterns today. And pa parents, patterns are really important um, for math because there's just uh, so much that they'll do in math when, when they get older. Being a fourth grade teacher, we use patterns a lot and it really helps in their math skills. But patterns are also good as a basis for reading because patterns are a lot like hearing rhyming words. So when you're reading, if you can figure out the pattern, it helps you, helps a student know what's coming next and what to expect and a lot of prediction skills. So um, patterns are really important and your children are old enough to work on patterns. So I have a couple things with me today. I have some Play-Doh and of course I brought some coins. I have pennies and dimes and quarters. And then I tried to just gather things that you guys would have at home. I went outside and I got some rocks and just some little sticks. And then all I have is just some paper and a pencil. And I'm gonna show you what um, we're gonna work on. The first pattern, I'm gonna work on three different kinds of patterns. The first one we call an AB sequence. A, B, A, B. So I wanna show this to you. A, B, A, B. Um, and so all that basically means is that your, your pattern is just one thing and then another, and then the same thing that you started with, and then your second thing, and it just continues. A, B, A, B. Not necessarily using the letters. So that's one pattern I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, the next one we call, or can be referred to, as A, B, C. And then it continues, just one item, another item, a third item, and then you just start over with your first one. So A, B, C, A, B, C, A. So it's just a pattern of three. And of course that could keep going. Um, you don't want to have too many in your, in your sequence because then it just becomes really long. Um, another one that we can do is called A, B, B, A, and it just continues that way. So you have one item, two that are alike, and then your first item, and then it would keep going, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B, A. And then obviously, one more that I'm just gonna go over with you. If you had A, A, B, A, A, and then it would just keep continuing. So it's kind of the opposite of this one. So there you go. So you have the same thing at the beginning and then one item in the middle, and then you repeat your first two, your first item. So I'm gonna show you some examples of those. I'm gonna have to flip the camera around um, so I don't have a helper here today, but I'm gonna flip it around and show you what I mean by these patterns, and then I'll talk to you again. Okay. So we're back. So remember I showed you the first one was A, B, A, B. So this pattern would be like you had, this would be your item A, and then let's do a dime. So you have quarter, dime, and then your next one would be, so you have A, B, well let's just do it like this. There, that makes a little bit more sense. So you have your first item, your second one, and then of course you would go back with your first item again and then your second so and it would just continue quarter dime quarter dime and all you would have to do parents is get some items um, like my sticks I can do the same thing with a stick rock stick rock and the play-doh I'll have to show you in a minute because I'm gonna have to put the camera down to do that but um, so that's your a b a b Item. And I just used two different things. You could use anything. You could use, you know, number sequences or anything that you find at home that you have more than one of. All right, so let's look at the next one. I think it was, here we go. A, B, C, A. So again, I could add in 
Um, let's do a stick, a rock, and a quarter. So there's your three things, A, B, C. So what would come next? The stick. So what you could do with your children is lay out some patterns and just have them say it, say them. Stick, rock, quarter. Stick, and then you would have rock, quarter. Stick, rock, quarter. And then leave one off, like your A item, and see if they can tell you what comes next, okay? Um, we look at this one, slide those out of the way. A, B, B, A, so all that would be is if you had, let's do a stick, and we'll do a rock, and another rock, so there's your A, B, B, what comes next? Yes, a stick, all right? So that's all that is, and here's the last one I showed you, A, A, B, A, A, so let's just do a penny, I'm, I'm sorry, that's a dime, a penny, or a dime, a dime, and then we'll put a penny in there, and then what comes next? That's right, two dimes. So they can start to see the repetition. So if you see this anywhere, like I know on that evaluation sheet that I sent home, or packet I sent home that I have been testing the children on um, at the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, this is on there, so that's what this means, is pattern sequencing. All right. I'm gonna flip it around again. Hold on. Okay, so I hope that made some sense to you. Um, I wanna show you real quick what I was gonna do with the Play-Doh. And if you notice, if I can get it open, that I only have one color. And you know, you obviously could do this with two different colors and you could do color patterns, you could do shape patterns, pretty much whatever. But I was just gonna take it, since I only have one color, and make like a big ball and then a tiny one. And that would be even my difference. So just the size. So I could do like big, little, big, little, big, little. So you can do patterns with anything. Um, letters, you could just put the letters down and let them make patterns with that. The kids were really getting good with working with patterns and Miss Frances worked on them a lot in her centers, and we used them in math. We had those bears, the colored bears, and they did a lot of patterns with those. Um, they were able to find patterns with um, stringing items, like Miss Frances did the other day when she did her string thing. You could you could have them make a pattern necklace or add a colored macaroni, just pretty much anything, or colored beads. So anytime that your children are even just playing, just ask them if, you, if they can make a pattern with what, the, what they're using. Um, we used to put the children down in just a free center when they had a free center and ask them to just draw patterns with their crayons. Could they make a pattern like a circle, a square, a circle, a square? And then I would, or Miss Frances, we could have drawn one that said circle, square, square, and ask them what comes next. So practicing that and saying the pattern over and over and over down the line helps them learn that repetition and prediction, which is very important with reading, being able to predict what comes next. Um, so, and especially in math later on in their older, in their older years, they will use patterns a lot too. So it doesn't just stop when they're little. I hope this has been something that you can use. And Miss Frances will be with you tomorrow. And I'll be here Wednesday. And Miss Frances will be back on Thursday. And then Friday, we might have a little surprise. But Friday will be our last video. This is our last week because next week we'll start in May. And so we'll let you just come up with your own thing. Or you can reuse some of the things that we've done to do some review, but your children are about ready for kindergarten, so we're real excited for them. Have a great afternoon, and Miss Frances, here's the pen. It's all yours. Bye-bye.